Welcome to WXTV, your online source for weatherization training. This is another episode in response to viewer suggestions. Attic prep and insulation. It's a cornerstone of weatherization. We'll be traveling to Fargo, North Dakota, where having an extra bit of insulation in your attic is never a bad idea. Carl Peters from the North Dakota State University Extension Service, and we're here today with Doug Bakke with the South no Southeast North Dakota Community Action Agency. And what he's going to do is he's going to step us through the process of insulating and making sure an attic is properly sealed. So, Doug. Okay. Hi. I'm uh, again. I'm Doug Bakke. I'm a uh, foreman and uh, weatherization crew for uh, Senca, which is uh, Southeastern uh, North Dakota Community Action Agency. And uh, what we're going to go through here today is uh, what to look for when we're insulating the attic what some of the problems we might find before we insulate an attic and then uh, blow in the attic, uh, uh, that's about it. Uh, we're going to go insulate an attic. Uh, one of the things, first things we always look for is for uh, knob and tube wiring, just to make sure that if there is any knob and tube wiring, if, if it's live or if it's disconnected. Uh, if it's live, then we have uh, usually have an electrician come in there and uh, rewire the attic so that uh, we can blow on top of it. As you can see here, most of this wire here is some of the old uh, wrapped wire or NM uh, wire. It's all encased. I guess another thing, a second thing I always look for is uh, moisture problems. If we always try to look and see, look on nail heads, uh, or on the nail, not the nail heads, but the nails that come through, uh, if there's any frost or anything like that on the nails. If we know there's frost and we know that, uh, that somehow that moisture is getting up in the attic here and it's usually through a chaseway, somewhat like a plumbing stack, uh, maybe around the chimney, possibly um, can lighting. Looking, inspecting this attic here, uh, I'm not seeing hardly anything for frost or anything like that. And there already are some roof vents on the house and down on the very end you can see there's a gable end vent. Uh, so we're thinking there, there's probably enough ventilation up here already. You know, if you got a moisture problem, you know, it isn't that you don't have enough ventilation, it's because it's coming from somewhere inside the house. Uh, you want to seal up, seal up the ceiling, you know, as airtight as possible. You don't want any moisture, air coming up from the house into the attic. So that's where we look at our at uh, uh, attacking the problem is where how is this moisture getting into the attic? Just another thing to do uh, if you're up here in the attic, make sure you can find your uh, your uh, ceiling joist uh, and stuff. Those are the best things to be standing on. Uh, you don't want to be standing on your sheetrock or your foot will definitely go through. So just kind of be careful, kind of slide your feet along. Also, you don't really want to step on the wires either when they're uh, laying across on there because any rubbing or any friction, you know, could cause a problem inside, you know, and could cause a hot spot in the wiring. Uh, in this particular house, uh, we did a walk around, uh, seeing that it looked like there was some soft events. Uh, once we got up into the attic that uh, they were all sealed off or not, it's almost like a, a fake soffit. Uh, but on houses that do have uh, soft vents, uh, we install uh, these chutes here. Uh, and they come uh, 16 inch or 24 inch. Uh, so we just stuff them to down to the vent, either staple them up uh, along the edge. And just so that you have that, so that when we're insulating that we don't blow insulation over that soffit vent and, uh, and seal up that soffit vent. Uh, we're here by the chimney to uh, check for moisture getting up into, or warm air from the house uh, getting up into the attic. Uh, okay, let's uh, depressurize the house uh, to 50 pascals. So we set up the blower door downstairs and what we're going to do is uh, depressurize the house. If there is any leaks or anything around this chimney, uh, I use a smoke pencil. Uh, if there's any leaks around here, the smoke should get uh, uh, sucked down through the, through the chaseway and then through the house. As you can see, smoke isn't going down. Well, it looks like these two sides of the chimney are pretty well sealed up from the rest of the house. Okay, we're on the other couple sides here of the chimney, and I'm just going to run this smoke pencil past uh, the chimney again. Smoke, this seems to be going pretty much uh, kind of up. 
Yeah, and it seems to be pretty well sealed. Uh, next one we'll try, we'll try one of the plumbing stacks that's going through the ceiling here. Uh, still got the blower door running, uh, depressurizing the house. Uh, here, we just want to take a look around this plumbing stack. And the smoke seems to be it's pretty much going straight up. Doesn't seem to be getting sucked down anywhere. All right, uh, let's pressurize the house then. Maybe that we can uh, also test if, uh, if your attic is, if there's leaks coming up into the attic is with an infrared camera. Uh, what we do is we pressurize the house instead of uh, depressurizing the house. So we're actually, we're forcing air from the inside the house. If there is any holes up in the attic, uh, forcing that air up and through there and the infrared camera would detect that and see that warm air coming up. Okay, he's uh, getting the fan uh, started up downstairs. Uh, and we're just taking a picture here of the insulation. And there you can see your chimney. Pretty warm. Well, it's a cold day here today, so uh, temperature-wise, we're only looking uh, maybe about uh, six, seven above. Uh, we can switch over here to the plumbing stack. It doesn't seem like there's any uh, warm air coming up around the, uh, the plumbing stack. It's showing it's really hot, but it's really only about uh, 40 degrees uh, above zero just compared to everything else that's up here. Okay, it shows, it's showing like there's a little bit of heat uh, coming from around uh, where the chimney and, uh, and the ceiling sort of meet. Uh, you're looking at, uh, if I can hold it steady enough here, it's about 50 degrees. Um, if there was a chaseway in here, uh, what we would do around the chimney and stuff is uh, is make it like a little dam, attic dam, uh, made out of, uh, like uh, we call it insta shield. I can show you kind of a demonstration of the, uh, what material that we use. And then we use fire caulk uh, to go around this chimney just to kind of dam it off because we don't want to blow any more insulation up and around that uh, chimney just because I believe it might be a, a fire hazard. Okay, this is one of the things we were talking about using this insta shield. Uh, it's got some little fingers here on it and stuff that we use like if there was uh, a chaseway or something like that around the chimney or a plumbing stack or anything like that. And I can show you here kind of like on this can lighting here, on kind of an uh, example on how, how we do it here. What a person would do is just kind of wrap that up so that insulation uh, wouldn't get on the can lighting or anything like that. Uh, and then we would take, we either staple it down alongside of here, you know, kind of seal that up. Uh, same way you think of it as a chimney too, is stopping this. Uh, we would take uh, this fire rated caulk. I uh, have some in a bucket here I can show you. Uh, and we would just smear that all the way around here, just kind of seal that all up around the chimney. If there was a chaseway, uh, possibly around the chimney and stuff like that, if we had to seal it up. Okay, uh, this is uh, one of the fire caulks uh, that we use. Uh, uh, it's just for uh, uh, fire and smoke blocking. Uh, it's a latex caulk. Uh, it's got a fire rating to it. Here's a two part or a single part foam trigger foam that we use. Uh, kind of you would use that maybe around like uh, plumbing stacks, uh, any other chaseways, possibly uh, open uh, if there's open wall cavities uh, that go up into the attic. Okay, uh, on this particular house, uh, there's actually two attics. There's an addition built onto the attic, and here we can gain access into this attic through uh, one of the children's uh, bedrooms. I'll end up taking this off here and then uh, we'll poke our heads up there and uh, take a look and see what we got to play with up there. Uh, you just never know what might be on top of one of these things so you've got to be kind of careful taking this off. Another thing too we might do here, we might actually build them, uh, put a decent piece of plywood in here and then we'll insulate on top of that plywood and then we're also going to build probably an attic dam on this particular one. Okay. okay, we're up here now in this uh, second attic. Uh, seeing that there's no no chimney, no uh, penetrations, no uh, plumbing stacks uh, coming through up here in this attic. Roughly, there's probably, oh, let's say probably about, oh, probably about uh, seven, eight inches of insulation up here already. Uh, we would like to see about 16 inches. Uh, I need two pieces at 18 and two of them at 26. 
Uh, what we'll probably do is uh, frame this uh, hatch out uh, just to make it look a little bit nicer and then come about past maybe about a half an inch or so uh, so that our plywood when we put our hatch in plywood will have a place to sit on top of that on top of that trim board or that trim work. All right my, my guy Matt here he brought he got uh, the pieces of plot one by here uh, one by ten that we use and this is what we're going to use uh, for uh, kind of building this attic dam. So I got that box built pretty much uh, and then I just screw it down to the ceiling joist here and just to make it pretty sturdy I believe we'll start uh, blowing insulation in that other uh, the main attic and then uh, we'll come back over here and hit this one up. It'll be 90 degrees then. <laughs> another you know enough insulation here to get this up to 16 and you just do this uh, if the client uh, ever wants to know if insulation was uh, that we installed up here uh, we'll go out throughout and nail nail these on uh, to wherever we can the guy that's up here uh, blowing the insulation kind of keep his level about 16 inches I guess another thing is that the radios kind of communicate between the guy up here blowing and the, and the guys down the truck uh, dumping bags. But it also helps just to uh, communicate with the guy down the truck. Uh, if you need the air turned up a little bit more, maybe if you need a little bit more product, uh, that type of stuff. Oh yeah, we're gonna go well, out, I think. Give an idea, kind of. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, this is what we use most of the time. What are you doing now? We found that the, the chimney uh, from the fireplace, wood fireplace is running on the outside here. So we're just going to kind of cover that hole up uh, just so that we don't blow any insulation uh, around that fireplace uh, stack. So he's just in there sealing that up. Well, here we are. We're going to go up. Uh, we're going to kind of rough vent into the second attic uh, to, uh, uh, to gain access. Uh, our hose uh, isn't far enough, and we don't want to drag the hose uh, through the through the house to get, gain access into this attic. So we're going to cut a roof vent in. Client already has one roof vent already on the roof here. What I'm going to try to do is I'm going to cut another roof into in here, try to keep it at the same height, uh, roughly, and about the same distance, roughly about from each other. Uh, make them kind of even, make them kind of look look good when we're finished here. Three tab shingles. I usually take take a measurement here between the tabs here. It's about 12 inches. We'd like to try to cut about a 12 by 12 hole uh, for these roof ends. Then I'm above the nail line, so I don't have to worry about uh, once I get this piece cut out is. Uh, we're going to about uh, have to try to dig nails out. Right. I 
once I get past it, I'll drop back down into it again. So now I'll take my bar here. I usually go up here so far, just go around with my bar, just to make sure I didn't hit no nails or anything like that. Uh, just make sure so that when that roof vent comes in here to get slide in, we'll black tar all this around here uh, and then slide this up and in here like so underneath the shingles. And there, and it goes. And then we'll take uh, some neoprene nails, inch and a half inch nails with a little rubber gasket on it. And we'll put, uh, normally I put like five across the bottom and then two up each side. So the rain, when it does rain or something like that, when the snow melts, all the moisture will just keep flowing off here and not go uh, inside the roof or anything like that. Well, that's it for another episode of WXTV. Thanks to Carl Peterson and Doug Bakke for showing us some of those things to look out for when insulating an attic space. And hey, thanks for watching. WXTV, your online source for weatherization information, techniques, and expert advice. <laughs>